Hi, my name is Joe Harford. And I'm Angie Singer Keating. And this is Security Over Coffee. Um, so why the dog? She's a two-year-old uh, German short hair pointer. Her name is Lacey. And the reason why we're going to uh, have Lacey in the video today is as an additional prop, so we're not boring. But more importantly, to talk about some basic training, security training. Not that I'm, we're going to put a shock collar on an employee, for God's sake, but just to kind of give you an idea of the, the training that's necessary with a dog, um, and then just try, try to, tra to, to tie that in with the training that we do with our employees around IT security. So just some basic things. Stay. Here. Sit. Stay. Stay. Here. Sit. Stay. She's posing for the camera. She is. Mom would be proud of you. Yes, yeah, she would. Lacey, here. Here. Lacey, down. 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 Stay. Stay. Now, if only it were that easy with our employees. Well, it could be, but people would be offended if we asked our employees to wear a shock collar. Yes, they might. Um, unfortunately, a lot of organizations use the stick approach. They do. Could it be equated with the shock collar? Which is not necessarily a bad thing, depending upon your employees. Yes, it's definitely a bad thing. <laughs> so what we want to do is we would like to move to our conference room now, uh, have some coffee, uh, also talk about our sponsor this week. That's right. We do have a sponsor, our very first sponsor, as yes, a matter of fact. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And we're going to talk about some ways to have effective security training to reduce your risk of data breaches and security incidents without having to use a shock collar. So, welcome we're back. back. To, well, sorry, welcome back. Um, <laughs> we're, we're here to talk about security tips for employees, but before we get started, um, we wanted to give a big shout out to our very first corporate sponsor. Yes. Um, Allegheny Shredders out of Delmont, Pennsylvania, and more specifically to um, Evelyn Jefferson. She has been, um, at least for me, one of the, the kindest and most thoughtful individuals that I met um, having been involved with NAID. She is um, a delight to work with. She's incredibly professional. She very much cares about her customers and she's done um, a great job for the Wagner family over these many years. And uh, we appreciated the, the new props that she sent us. Oh my gosh, the cup, is, the cup is fantastic. But the best part is we have this lunch bag which I personally am going to use for taking treats to horse shows. Okay. What are you going to use yours for? Uh, to store cold beer on my boat. Okay, that's good. That's good. I don't know if you could get a six-pack in there, but you could get four to five, I'm going to say. And then this is my favorite, okay? Um, a lot of you who know me know that I am shopping for a new truck to be able to pull a horse trailer. I am saving this. I'm not opening this until... I get my new truck, and it's going to be my first accessory in my new truck. It's a cell phone holder. Okay. It has super sticky stuff, but it's not permanent and doesn't leave any marks. Nice. So this is a brilliant giveaway, and we love this Allegheny Shredders. By the way, we also have an Allegheny Shredder. Yes, we do. Which we love. Um, I think, other than just basic routine maintenance, um, we have never had a single problem with that. And uh, we're, we're really happy. That was a great investment we made with Evelyn. And I know that, uh, especially at the upcoming NAID conference, they're going to have a lot of new, innovative uh, stuff they for are. folks to take a look at. They are. So again, thank you very much, Evelyn, and thank you, uh, Allegheny Shredders, for being our corporate sponsor of uh, Security Over Coffee. So as we go out in the field and we talk to our customers, um, you know, we find that there are a number of different things that they're challenged by when we talk about this whole world of IT security and they understand how to buy hardware and they understand how to buy software and where to find engineering services, etc. But what we continue to find and read about is truly the weakest link in the overall security infrastructure and whether we like it or not folks, it's our employees. Um, we have the same challenges in a small company. Mm -hmm. um, we're not perfect and so what we wanted to be able to do today is share with you some security tips that Angie's found that have really worked out in the field, um, some of which I think are just a, a common sense reminder, 
and also things that, that we've been very fortunate enough here at Reclamere to develop on our own for our customers that we wanted to share with you today. So, Angie, you're up. Sure. And these aren't security tips. These are security training tips to help you have an effective program. Many of the biggest data breaches that you've read about in the newspaper, while the media uh, story will make it sound highly complex, and once the intruder is in the system, it is highly complex how they move around. But what's not highly complex right now uh, are how they're getting in. And too often, our own staff, our own people, owners, executives, are literally clicking that mouse, which is the equivalent to handing them the key. Right. And so, one of the things that we wanted to talk about were uh, some of the training tips so that your training cannot be just, well, compliance, we did our annual training, um, but it can actually be effective and have real results in your organization. So the first one, I think, is that this should not just be an annual thing. Many organizations, because of regulations, they may be required to have training, but they look at it as something to get done. So training should be something that is done to make a culture of security. In order to do that, things like newsletters, your internal websites, your internal social media, uh, things like quarterly lunch and learns, and those types of, of events are really important so that it is a constant, constant presence in the organization that folks constantly are reading about. Well, let me, let me play devil's advocate for a minute because a lot of the, a lot of the folks that we work with at Need and that we're going to wind up seeing in Orlando next week are small business owners like you and I. Yes. And many of them have uh, three, maybe four employees total. Mm -hmm. So how do you get someone who's a small business owner um, who's wearing a dozen different hats to try to get from payroll to payroll to pick up on something like this and really get them to say, okay, I get it and, and I want to do it in my organization? It's a, it has to be a conscious decision. Um, I think that when we talk about our clients, uh, we talk about attorneys, we talk about hospitals, we talk about CSOs, these are the folks that really have the influence to say, we will do this and make that commitment. And that really ties right into my second tip, which is find a security champion. The And that may not necessarily come from your IT security team. Sometimes it needs to be an executive or management or compliance related individual that has charisma, that can speak. Uh, we don't want someone who's going to put the audience to sleep. Right. Um, we also don't want someone who has any type of air of arrogance where people feel like they're being talked down to. Sure. And so that security champion in an organization is really, really important. Now, if you're a very small company, what you want to do is you want to make use of some sites like uh, the cybersecurity tips on the uh, US CERT website, uh, which is the um, computer emergency response team, cyber emergency response team, something to that effect. But it's us-cert.gov. Great tips so that you can be self-educating. You know, if you're a small company, you're a small law firm, you're a 10-person company, um, you want to make sure that everybody is looking at these tips and, and reading these tips. It may not be uh, suitable for you to have this big formal program. Now, for our very large clients, this may be something that they want to do as a managed service. This may be something that they want to do web-based training where they can um, get this service, they can have their users log in at their convenience so they have tracking in place, they have grading systems, they also can look at baselines. The point of training is to get better. So if we would do a mock phishing attack and 50% of our workforce clicked on this attack, we would hope that after training we could get that down significantly. Sure. So those baselines we want to continue to track and that also gives a culture of, uh, of security. Well, you know, one of the things that I thought of, and, and Evelyn had said this to me a couple years ago when we were talking about um, equipment, and that is, 
you know, in, in the document destruction industry, in records management, and in IT asset management, we pay a lot of attention to maintenance programs as they relate to our equipment. Sure. It could be a shredder, it could be a baler, it could be our own trucks, etc. Mm -hmm. And so I think that you have to, in, to some extent, you have to take security training and have the same mindset from a maintenance perspective and it's not just oh, about checking off that box. That's, it's about that's a great analogy. I love that. And, and I think that you, when you, when you're able to do that, and you're able to add that into the list of the other things that the organization is responsible to take care of, so you can run your business and yes. you can make money. Yes. Then I think you begin to set that the tone that taking care of security on an annual basis and building that culture is just as important as the maintenance on your shredder or your baler or your trucks because if those things go down, you stop making mm -hmm. money. If you have a security breach, not only do you stop making money, you can go out of business. Sure, sure. Well, and I, I think the other thing is that, you know, we don't just maintain our trucks once a year. We don't just maintain our computers once a year. We don't maintain our hospital equipment once a year. It is an ongoing, continuous cycle, and your number one biggest asset in your company are your people. Right. So absolutely, that, that maintenance is really important. I think another really big thing is to tailor the message to the audience. So when we're training folks in our organization who are not as tech savvy as the IT folks, it's really important that we talk about these issues in ways that are uh, significant to them in their workplace and how they do their job. They don't need big long explanations about how a poor password can get a system attacked. They need to understand what are strong passwords, how do you develop a strong password, and what are some of the ways that you can help your staff either through password keepers or other ways that you can help them continuously change their passwords. Um, and in addition to tailoring this, make sure it's also relevant to their home security. This isn't just important from a keeping their attention perspective, the whole what's in it for me. Um, because these things will, these types of security training will keep them safe at home. Sure. But with so much of our workforce now being able to work remotely, work from home, it's absolutely crucial that they understand that this applies to their online banking, but it also applies when they're remoting into systems from their home for work or when they're using their work computers on their home networks. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a really, really big deal to keep their attention. Food also is a really good way to keep their attention. Sure. It, it's funny that you talk about the personal piece because one of the things that I know that we um, had pushed out into social media not too long ago was um, this time of year we're getting ready to come up on tax season. Yes. In fact, we're in tax season and yes, our accountant are. is currently losing his mind during tax season, as most accountants do. And so, um, you know, that whole idea of you want to rush online and you want to do your taxes as quickly as possible and you want to get your return or whatever the case may be, and so, you know, those scams are out there yes. that people really have got to pay attention to. And, you know, I may have mentioned this the last time, but again, I go back to the example with my own parents. And, you know, the old telephone scams are back mm -hmm. and, they're, yes. and they're very, very strong. And those scams are from the IRS. They are from the cable company. They are from Visa MasterCard. And so I think, again, it's about, you know, what are you doing at work? What are you training people to do? So you've got a heightened awareness around security right. and then helping them go ahead and trans translate that into what are you going to do with that at home, whether it has to do with older parents or your kids. Well, you know that I made my cheat sheet shortly before we started filming this. I do know that. And you and I did not talk about this that at all. That is also correct. Okay. So that Vulcan mind meld thing that is, you know, kind of scary. There we go. Just like you that. completely led into... My next point, okay, which is focus on the current risks. You know, I've seen security training where it's the same old, use a strong password, don't walk away from your screen without locking it. That is the kind of stuff that is bound to bore your folks to tears. It is very ineffective uh, in terms of retention. 
what you really have to focus on are the biggest risks. Right now, your organization should be focusing on some of the things that are happening around the tax scams, helping them understand how these scams happen on their work phones, on their work tablets, um, on their personal devices, keeping it relevant. At Christmas time, we see a huge uptick in the fake FedEx tracking right. phishing emails. Sure. We're not going to be able to deliver your package on time. Here's your tracking number. Click here. I shop online all the time. I don't even remember from time to time what I might have coming. But if it's Christmas, I'm really worried. I, I want to make sure the gifts get there. So helping them understand that the bad guys focus on stress, the human nature to want to help others. Um, so it's really important that we keep our training um, always having the foundation, the fundamentals of strong passwords and uh, not clicking on fake antivirus and those types of things, but definitely include some of the newer things that are happening. And again, uh, sites like US CERT are a great place to go to see some of the newer threats that are, that are out there. Uh, SANS.org, um, which is also another great site, uh, Security and Network Security, um, S-A-N, Uh, Again, a lot of great information there for the current threats. So I think that, you know, there's a number of things that everybody gets to think about in how they're going to deal with security training at work and then when we talk about going home and, and, and again, taking that information. Um, So I just want to, again, I want to thank Allegheny Shredders. Well, I have one more point. You do. Yeah. Of course you do because it never ends with you, but please continue. Four is not a good tip number. You have five tips, you have ten tips, you don't have four tips or seven tips or nine tips, you have you have five. It's a good round number. You're right. Okay. So, last one, which again ties into wrapping this up okay. and takes us back to beautiful Lacey. We have to use the carrot, not the stick. Or, in our demonstration, the doggy treat, not the shock collar. When we are training our staff and we are doing various different things, we need to keep in mind that employees need to be encouraged to bring forth things that may have happened. Maybe they clicked on something and in hindsight they realize, wow, that I shouldn't have done that. Um, they should never be chastised for that. Um, they, should be, they should feel like no one's going to ridicule them. They're not going to get into trouble. That they're going, they know, and they know where to report this, where, you know, with the support ticket or, or help desk, phone call, whatever it is. Um, but, but know that, that they can do this. Um, and in some cases, they may even be praised. If you have a staff member who does something really extraordinary that prevents a security incident, or the security incident was started, but because of their action was contained, I'm a huge fan of recognition for that. Um, and so that's a, that's a really, really, really important fact. Carrot, not stick. Well, I'm glad that you, oh. <laughs> you, you used that fifth point. Thank you. Yes. So to wrap it up finally, um, again, thank you very much to Evelyn from Allegheny Shredders, uh, not only for the equipment, but your friendship, obviously. And we can't wait to see you next week in, in Nate. In uh, SeaWorld in Orlando. And, uh, and to everybody out there, we, we want to continue to share information with you that can help you. And uh, whether you're using it in your organization or you're using it with your clients or your family, um, the, the reality is that we have to look out for each other. So thank you again so much and, uh, and take care. Bye-bye.